Government corruption has never been more prevalent or caused more harm. It's why extremism is on the rise. It's why the financial gap between the haves and have nots has never been wider. And it's why our planet is at risk of an extinction level tragedy. That's why I need your help to keep exposing the truth about the rot on both sides of the aisle. Become a supporter or a friend of the show today by clicking on the coffee link in the description box below. Friends of the show, join me on a Zoom hangout once a month, and you guys can ask me any questions you want, and I can get to know you better. But the most important reason to help is to keep the show alive. Together, we can and will save our country and our planet. Thanks in advance and enjoy the show. So, like I said, he knew they had weapons. He knew that some of these people were carrying AR-15s, and he still got on stage and encouraged them to, quote, fight like hell and to go to the Capitol. And his own White House attorneys had advised him not to include words like that in his speech. Hutchinson testified that both Pat Cipollone and Eric Hirschman told Trump and Meadows that Trump needed to remove, to strip certain words and phrases out of his speech that day. Specifically, they warned him not to mention the word fight. We all know he didn't listen to that. He said it numerous times. And they said, do not tell people to go to the Capitol. So Trump's speech ends And he is still, at that point, he's still under the impression that he's going to the Capitol. So he gets in his vehicle and his security detail says, you know, no, sir, we cannot let you go to the Capitol. It's not safe because of all these weapons, because of all these people. Trump has a total meltdown. Apparently, he's like cussing, yelling. He tries to reach forward to try to grab the steering wheel to redirect the car and the head of his security detail, the head of secret service detail for him grabs his arm and says, you know, sir, you need to let go of the steering wheel. We cannot take you to the Capitol. We have to go back to the white house. Trump then takes his free hand and grabs this guy by the throat. But tell me again how Trump isn't a violent person. He's not capable of allegedly beating and raping a 13-year-old at Epstein's New York mansion back in the 90s. Yeah, when he had more testosterone coursing through his body. Anyway, they get Trump back to the White House. They, you know, he reluctantly goes back. And then so he's pissed right? Because he didn't get his way again. He's looking at this as his last chance to rig the election in his favor to stop this electoral count. And so he gets back to the White House and he allegedly commits yet another crime. He fails to uphold his, his oath of office to protect the United States. Hutchinson testified that she tried to get Meadows to take action. She's seeing these reports on the news of people breaking into the Capitol. They're overrunning police. This was multiple times that she went to Meadows and tried to get his attention on this. And she said he had no reaction. She said, you know, basically he acted completely nonchalant about this whole thing. And he told her Trump wants to be alone. So she's frustrated. She said she was frustrated. She didn't know how to wake him up to get him to to do something and realize this is a problem. So she goes to leave his office and she sees Pat Cipollone, Trump's White House counsel. He comes barreling down the hall, barges into Meadows' office, and he warns him Trump needs to do something. This is getting dangerous. There, people are chanting to hang Mike Pence. And Meadows says to Cipollone, quote, Trump doesn't want to do anything, Pat. Not he doesn't know, he's not aware. No, Trump doesn't want to do anything. And Cipollone then yells at him and says, someone's going to die and their blood is going to be on your hands. So only then. When Meadows realizes, oh, wow, I might actually be in trouble for this. I might actually be to blame. 
he decides, okay, let's go talk to the president. So according to Hutchinson, he and Cipollone go down the hallway, they go to talk to Trump, and she has Mark Meadows' phone. He's, he's waiting for a call back from Jim Jordan. The call comes through. Hutchinson goes down to the White House dining room, which is where they all were. She opens the door. She gives the phone to Meadows. And she hears people at this time discussing how they're chanting, hang Mike Pence. And then she hears Meadows say to Cipollone, quote, you heard him, Pat. He thinks Pence deserves it. He doesn't think they're doing anything wrong. And then Hutchinson confirmed that this conversation, this whole exchange took place shortly before Trump goes and issues that infamous tweet saying that Pence didn't have the courage to do what needed to be done. So we now know, we now have confirmation that Trump knew his supporters were threatening to murder his vice president. He knew that they had weapons on them. So they had the means, they had the motive, they had the means and the opportunity to do so. They were already breaking into the Capitol. He knew they were inside the Capitol. And instead of trying to calm the situation down, he throws gasoline on the fire. And then Hutchinson also stated that there were clearly three camps of people in the White House that day. One, one group that was encouraging Trump to take action. That group included his White House counsel. So Hirschman, Cipollone, also she said Ivanka Trump was trying to get him to do something about this. The second group, she said, was kind of ambivalent. They knew something should be done, but they also knew that Trump didn't want to do anything, so they didn't want to poke the bear, I guess. And then she said that there was a third group that emerged, which she referred to as the deflect and blame group. This group wanted to blame Antifa and BLM, and then they were encouraging Trump's worst instincts. She said Meadows was part of that last group. So Meadows was stoking the flames. This was her boss, remember. This is a lifelong Republican who has worked for nothing but Republicans and who said, you know, I was there to try to help the public understand all of the good things that Donald Trump was doing. She's not a never Trumper. She was all in with Trump. <laughs> 